What's the best way to drill steel? We'll find out in a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. Well, as you can tell, we've got a complete assortment of different drilling products up here from drills to mag drills to drill bits to step drill bits. On and on, we've got a bunch of different things. We're going to show you how to drill thin sheet metal as well as even thick steel. Sometimes we find that people are a little apprehensive or a little scared to drill into, into thick steel or to drill holes in thick steel because they're not sure exactly what to do. We're going to really break this down really simplistic, try to take the uh, confusion out of it, if you will, and definitely try to take the complication out of it. So let's get started. It looks like we pulled every piece of drill accessory and bit out of the shop. No, not really. Uh, but we have tried to take a nice wide slice of different components used for different things to show you how to maybe drill better in steel. Um, so, you know, maybe something that you just know, uh, like the back of your hand, and that's a great thing. Most people don't. Most people get a little bit scared when it comes to drilling in steel, especially when it comes to thick steel, and then even more so into stainless steel and uh, other, you know, exotic material, if you will. We're really not going to get into that, but we're going to talk about thick steel. We're going to talk about thin steel. We're going to talk about twist drill bits, reamers, hole saws, step bits, um, twist drill bits, uh, annular cutters, and more. Anyway, and we are going to try to get through this rather quickly. So rather than kind of giving you kind of a walk through all of it, let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start on some thinner metal. We won't spend a whole lot of time there. That's probably pretty self-explanatory. And we'll work our way up into some thick metal and even up into the mag drill, drill press, uh, and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started on some sheet metal. All right, what we've got is an old car fender here. Now this is some pretty sturdy metal. This is off of a, a 69 truck. So it's some pretty beefy metal, not the flimsy stuff like you see nowadays. Uh, so should represent a decent thickness of steel. Uh, I won't measure that. We'll just call it sheet metal. And now drilling into this, I, again, like I mentioned, pretty self-explanatory. You know, I've got a cheap set of Ryobi drill bits. These probably cost, I'm sure, less than 20 bucks at Home Depot. I can just grab a drill bit chuck it up into my drill and should not have a problem drilling through this. Do I need any lube? Not really. If you wanted to put some on it, you could do so. Uh, if you wanted to you know, shoot some WD-40, would that be fine? Yeah, WD-40 is, is fine, but it, typically for drilling and, uh, and cutting metal, things like that, I don't think it has a lot of body to it, uh, but it will work for something like this. So drilling a hole in there, not a big deal, right? I mean, we don't need a pilot hole. We can just take our drill bit and drill it through. Now it did walk a little bit on you, so you may want to take a punch and punch that first. Uh, but drilling in the sheet metal, not a big deal, even with a hole saw. So the same hole saw typically that you would drill in wood. There are some, you know, uh, wood hole saws that are really specific where it may just have like three carbide teeth. I wouldn't recommend that for cutting into metal, but something like this, a typical hole saw, And typically it says uh, bimetal blade on it. You should be absolutely fine. And I'll just use that for my pilot. Now that's something on a hole saw, you see where it starts to smoke? That's definitely when we want to use a little bit of lube to keep that cool. So we can take our WD-40 again, wet that down a little bit. And now we've drilled a hole through our sheet metal. Again, not a big deal. But let's understand something. When we're putting lube, when we're drilling, it's not necessarily that it's lubing, right? Because we're wanting to cut. What it's doing is cooling. So it's keeping that surface tension, that, that surface temperature of the drill bit cool so it can continue to work. Because if we overheat our drill bit, we actually kill the drill bit. We take the, the temper out of it, if you will, or the annealing out of it, and then it becomes a, uh, less of a, of a cutting tool and more of it just turns into bush, if you will, especially the cheaper ones. So drilling holes with a twist, twist drill bit or even a hole saw, not a big deal when it comes to sheet metal. And again, if you're drilling just a, a hole or two, especially with a twist drill bit, 
really lubrication is, is optional. Now, if we wanted to throw on a step bit, so now here's a, here's a step bit. So we've seen them, electricians like to use these, but more and more we see these in shops where they're great for, especially, uh, you know, people putting, it, putting in stereos, things like that, drilling through firewalls, even fabrication guys or uh, custom guys drilling into firewalls. Uh, these step bits are great because you got the, you know, variability to drill whatever size hole you need. And again, you could, typically it works better for you Typically it works better if you drill a pilot hole first, just because typically the tip of that is just not as sharp or not as, not as quick as just taking your drill bit. That drill bit's dull, obviously. Now let's talk about speeds. So even in, in sheet metal, how fast do you want to go? Well, you could download a whole paper you know, I'm sure 50 different ways to Sunday uh, on Google that you could find the speeds and feeds for the different thickness of metal, the different size drill bits, the type of drill bit you're using and on and on. You can do that. Absolutely. In fact, I recommend have a look at it. You could also take the easy method or the safe method and just go slow. So I've got it in speed one. If you look on the side of your drill, typically it's labeled. And on this one, it's zero to 650 RPM and low and up to 2000 in high. I also have a variable speed trigger. I can slow that down if I want to. I don't have to have it wide open. This Milwaukee here, it's a little bit slower. Zero to 550 in low and zero to 2000 in high. Again, I've got it in low. So you can just take the safe route and say slow. So when you're drilling into metal, especially the thicker you go, go slower. So now I've got a pilot hole and I can take my step bit. And you can see I can walk that down. I can even open it all the way up if I want to, or I can stop at each one of those increments to the size that I need. So that's a great tool. So we kind of got the sheet metal taken care of. We know drilling sheet metal, not a lot of rules and worry that we need to worry about. So pretty easy to do that with any type of drill bit. But I will tell you, if you want to save the life of your drill bit, then treat them good. Put plenty of pressure on them. Don't let them just sit there without putting any pressure on because if they're not cutting, they're heating up. You want them to cut. You want, these, you want these big chunks coming out of here, not this little dust like you see flying around here. If you just got little dust particles, dust piles, that's heating up that bit and it's not cutting enough. Okay, now we've got some thicker steel. I think this is some uh, three by eight or something like that. Three and a half, four by eight. Uh, rectangular tubing and it's about a quarter inch thick. So pretty thick stuff. So drilling into that, we're not just gonna grab a hole saw and drill into that. If I had to drill a hole with this hole saw through this stuff, I'd take it really slow and keep it really lubed up, but I wouldn't recommend using something like that on this. You definitely wouldn't recommend either a typical step bit for drilling into this. It's just too thick because what you would have would be, it would be trying to cut on at least two different steps at the same time, and you're just gonna really bind that up, probably break it or cause yourself some nice uh, wrist damage. Now I'm gonna take my same drill bit that I was just drilling into sheet metal. And the only thing different I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of, this is called Brute Lube from Champion Cutting, but basically it's wax. And what I like to do is I like to lube it with wax when I'm cutting through thick metal with a twist drill bit. It's just easier just to dip that in wax and now I've got it coated on the tip. And as I start drilling and it heats up, it will melt off and kind of form its own puddle and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now I could definitely take some cutting lube, uh, some wet lube, pour it there, but I just find when I'm using a twist drill bit, if I'll just dip it in the wax, that works out better. Now again, I've got it in low, and I think this is like a 3 16th inch drill bit, and I'm going to put a lot of pressure on this, I don't know, probably 20, 25 pounds worth of pressure to, uh, to actually cut this hole. Now again, I'm using this cheap Ryobi drill bit to cut thick steel. I'm getting some decent chunks. It's definitely not cutting, you know, big chunks. I'm getting no spirals or anything. So this drill bit's definitely not the best, but it will make the cut on this even thick steel. 
Get some more wax on there. But I want to make sure that I've got enough pressure that I'm getting chips off of that and not dust. And you see, I drilled through there with not a lot of problem at all. Now, what I could do is go to a better drill bit. So here's a set of Milwaukee Cobalt drill bits. Well, Cobalt's kind of top of the line. You know, if you're spending money on Cobalt, you're spending some bucks. You know, this is probably 15, 20 bucks for the whole set. This is probably over a hundred for the whole set. And some Cobalt sets you may spend two or 300 bucks for. In this case, this has got a little bit of a, it's, they call it a quad tip, so it's more than a split tip. Uh, it's got a little bullet point tip on there, and that helps get things started. Again, use a little bit of wax. And I'm going to try to do this without a pilot hole. Now, I always recommend you're doing thick steel, go ahead and drill you a pilot hole, especially if you're doing something over a quarter inch. Now I know when I'm about to go through and I definitely let up on it the best I can. So you just don't slam it through to the bottom. So with the cobalt bit, even though it's probably a pretty worn out bit, you see I'm getting longer chunks, longer spirals there. It's definitely cutting as I'm using the tool. I wanna make sure it's always cutting and then it's not heating up. You notice I didn't get any smoke. There's nothing, there's no, it's not overheating or anything like that, if it were just cutting that dust all the way through that quarter inch, you would definitely see it starting to smoke. Now there are some options when it comes to thicker steel like this, especially right now we've got a little, uh, couple of pilot holes started there. They do make some step bits that are made for thicker steel. This is a set here from Champion. And you see this one goes all the way up all the way up to 13 sixteenths. So all the way through this is gonna do a 13 sixteenths in a hole. And I'll go ahead and use some wax on that as well. Probably recommend an auxiliary handle on there. Here we go. That ought to work out a little better. A little more lube on there. And again, you're not seeing a lot of smoke here, even though I'm cutting through a quarter inch, and now I've opened up to well over a half inch. So the nice thing about a step bit like this is as it's starting the next hole, it's putting a nice little chamfer on there too. So if that's where I wanted to end, I could just hit it a little bit and it's gonna put a nice chamfer on the top of that hole and I may not even have to dress it up at all. So these thick uh, step bits, like from Champion, they are great for putting larger holes into thick steel like this. Also, when you're starting into thick steel, especially with a twist drill bit, you want to take a hammer and a punch or like this spring loaded punch and go ahead and get you a little dimple started and then that's where the drill bit will ride and it won't walk off on you. Now other than a step drill bit, if you're actually wanting to open up a hole in thick steel, you're not supposed to kind of step up drill bits. That's not the way drill bits are supposed to work. Hey, we all do it that way. I get it. But what you're supposed to do is use a reamer. This is called a car reamer and it's made to open this hole up all the way up to here. Now the problem with this is, obviously, we don't have enough depth to do that. So these step drill bits kind of take the place of that, but that's another way that you can open up holes is with a car reamer. And this again is made to go all the way up to the shank. So you lube it up really good and you run it all the way up till you hit the shoulder and then you know you've opened up the hole to where it needs to be. And you buy these in the specific sizes as to what size hole you want. Now let's take a look at an annular cutter. So this is an annular cutter, which is basically a hole saw 
for thick steel. So this is made to actually cut through this thick steel. Usually you see these on mag drills, and we'll watch that on, in a mag drill in just a moment. But this one has a smaller shank on it, the triangular shank, and that tells us that we can put this in our drill. And so this annular cutter is actually made for a drill. We're going to go ahead and put on uh, this... We're going to take this larger annular cutter. Mount it up in our drill. And again, we're in speed low. We'll take our punch. Give us a hole to start with our pilot bit. I don't think we want hammer drill mode. We'll turn that off on the drill mode. There we go. Move this a little closer. And again, you see I'm getting chunks there. Now, once I broke through, number one, I want to make sure I don't slam down on the metal with these carbide teeth and break those off. Now that I've got a little channel built there, put a little oil. Again, we're just keeping that cool. A little more oil. Again, we're trying to keep this cool. There we have it. And you see my plug actually came out because there's a little spring in there that ejects the plug when we're done. And here it is. So that's an annular cutter in a drill to drill a hole in thick, in thick steel. Definitely not aluminum, thick steel. Let's talk about aluminum for a minute. I'm not even gonna go over this because Treat aluminum like wood. I mean, you can drill through this with no problem whatsoever. I would recommend use a little bit of wax on it. That's just going to help keep the aluminum from sticking to the drill bit. Um, but, a little low, low, but a little lube on your drill bit when drilling this, it should go through nice and easy. And uh, you can even speed it up a little if you want to. But keep it slow and it'll drill through very easily. And any lube will help the, uh, all the debris come off the drill bit as well. So we're not going to cover any time here on aluminum. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of things over here on the drill press. I will tell you, drilling steel with a drill press is just always going to go faster. Uh, just being able to keep constant pressure on it, uh, have, the, uh, have the speed exactly where you want it, as well as keeping a perpendicular plane when you're drilling through or keeping a, uh, a stable plane when, when drilling through, it's just always going to cut better. And again, mainly because you can just keep steady pressure on the drill bit and probably more pressure on the drill bit just make sure you've got it slow i think i'm going to run this at like 400 rpm and we've got 3 8 thick steel and this is uh this is a half inch drill bit out of that ryobi set so this is about as cheap as you can get when you walk in the uh you know the hardware store or in the home depot this is about as cheap as you're going to get for a drill bit or a drill bit set and we're going to show you without a pilot hole we're going to drill right through this 3 8 thick steel Let's turn this on. You see I'm turning nice and slow. And I'm gonna get it started and I'm gonna put some good pressure on it. See I'm getting nice big chunks. A Little bit of smoke, but that's a big bit. You can stop and put some more oil on it if you want to. I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna push on through. I'm getting nice big chunks there. Now it's starting to go through, I'm gonna back off a little bit. There we go. So it started to heat up a little bit. I saw a couple of blue chips. That's why we know it's heating up. Um, but that's when I kind of backed off and let it, let it spin in there for a minute. But that's got a nice hole in there. And you've already cut through in seconds. So now we've got all these chunks, all this debris. 
from our drilling and you could be cutting, grinding, whatever, but when you have that metal debris, now I could take a magnet and I could clean that up or I could buy one of those, you know, special magnets on Amazon or whatever and clean that up, but then I've got to clean up my magnet. Then my magnet will have all that debris all over it and I'll have to go over to the garbage can and kind of pick it all up. Well, I'm just going to grab this Lowe's bag right here and I'm going to take the magnet and put it on the inside. So there's my magnet there on the inside. I'm going to pick up all of this trash all over here. You can get it clean as you want to. So there it is. Pull the bag off my magnet. My magnet's nice and clean. I throw my bag away and I'm done. Let's change this bit out and put an annular cutter in it. And one thing I like to do on my drill bit, on my drill press, you notice I don't have any holes in my plate here. That's because I always make sure that it's not going to hit. That's going to hit. So what are we going to do? We're going to sacrifice a piece of wood. I could even flip it over and put it right there in the V trough if I wanted to. Now I know I'm not going to hit my drill press base. A little bit of lube there. Turn it back on. And off we go. Steady pressure. And now we're through. Little racetrack there. Get some more lube. And there we have it much quicker in a drill press whenever you can and you see those long squiggly things that means we were cutting the entire time very little dust around there okay now we're to the big dog we've got the mag drill from champion cutting tool hey has anybody checked to see if champion would sponsor this video my goodness we're using everything in theirs by the way they are not sponsoring this video <laughs> but we have covered a lot of their stuff and there's good reason for that anyway uh, this is Champion Cutting Tools Mag Drill. Obviously, not the only person who makes a mag drill, not the only company who makes a mag drill. Many do, uh, but my point is the mag drill is where you want to go when you can, when you're drilling on the steel, especially on a job site. Uh, it just makes things a breeze because the magnet's going to give you thousands of pounds of force of holding power and not let this thing move around at all. You see how, how easy it's moving in a second. Once I turn that on, that's going to absolutely change. Uh, also on this one, we got one, two, and three as far as speeds, and it tells you uh, if you're drilling half inch to three quarter inch, uh, 13 sixteenths to, to 15 sixteenths, and then one inch to 13 sixteenths, and that's the cutter diameter. Um, and so if you're drilling those, that tells you what speeds to run. And we're drilling over an inch, so we're going to run it on speed three. This is your on and off button, on and off button as far as running the drill. This is your on and off button for the magnet. So let's run this. We've already got an angular cutter put in here, which by the way, takes a different fitting um, than just a drill press. So that's the fit, I think it's called a Weldon, uh, a Weldon, Weldon fitting, fitting. And basically it's got two flats to where uh, these Allen screws, set screws actually screw into there and keep it from uh, actually spinning in there anywhere. So let's see this in action. I'm gonna show you a couple of things on this. The cool thing about this, it auto lubricates. So you can see this, uh, this bottle of lube here comes through. I'll turn that valve on. When I turn the, the drill on, it'll start feeding oil into the bit, uh, as well as, it looks a lot like a drill press. However, uh, in this mode here, with the, with the arms out, it's just going to, you know, I can manually feed this. But once I push those in, it's going to auto engage and start running itself and self feeding and it'll also auto shut off. So let's see this in action. So first I'm, I'm going to drill us a hole, a nice clean hole away from these other holes that we have in this same steel. 
So you see I can easily move this. I'm going to turn the magnet on. And now it's not going anywhere. It's going to shake the whole table when I move this. I'm going to move the arms out. So I'm going to make sure they're out. I'm going to turn the valve on on my cutting oil. going all by itself. So you can see it shut off all by itself. Once it realized it was through, didn't feel any feedback, it shut that off. Now I can disengage this, run it back up, and then turn the machine off. Beautiful hole cut right there. Now you'll see that one thing, what will happen, obviously we've got a magnet turned on, so all of our trimmings are going right there to the magnet. If I shut the magnet off, see now I can just move that out of the way. Now here's the cool thing you can do with a mag drill and an annular cutter that you can't do otherwise. Now if I wanted to open up that up from the center, I could use a, a step bit, I could use a reamer, but if I wanted to offset cut that, I'd really have no ability to do so with any type of drill, um, maybe with a drill press, but or probably with a drill press, you could figure it out after some lining up. but can run this down and see where I want it to be and you can see I can I can be right on the edge right here on this side but really cutting a lot more on the other side I'll turn my magnet on and now it'll stick right there so you see where we're all set cutting it barely cutting it on this side but cutting it over on the other side more So now we've offset cut that hole with no problem whatsoever. It's not oblonged. It cut to one side and not the other. In fact, you can see right there, there's the eyebrow from it. So definitely cutting more on this side than this side. Now listen, machinist, I know you just sat through this whole thing telling me everything I did wrong and I'm sure there are a ton of things. So I'm not looking to be perfection in every step of the way on this, but I do know if you'll keep your bits going nice and slow, typically you're going to keep from burning them up as well as you keep them lubricated, which keeps them cool. And as long as we're seeing chunks or we're seeing chips coming out and we're not seeing that dust, that real fine particle, then we should be cutting and we should be okay. So that's my point here. Keep everything nice and slow and you should be able to save your drill bits and by all means, if you're drilling tons of hole in the thick steel, then go out and buy some cobalt drill bits or buy some better drill bits. Now I mentioned Champion Cutting Tool a few times. As I mentioned, they are not sponsoring this video. But one thing I like about them is they are pros in what they do. They're called Champion Cutting Tool. I can call them and say, hey, you know what? I've got some unobtainium that I'm trying to drill and I'm having trouble doing this and they will have somebody say, hey, here's the bit you need, here's how fast you need to run it, so forth and so on. That's what they know is cutting steel. So they're proficient at that. So if you're in a job where you're a fabricator, you're always working with steel, 
then team up with a company that knows what they're doing. Then you don't have to guess. You say, hey, can you send me that index of uh, uh, drills and taps or cobalt drills or uh, step drill bits, whatever. They've got a complete line. They can handle that. Again, not plugging Champion Cutting Tool, just saying that if you're, you're in that profession of metalwork, then team up with a company that can supply you with most everything you need so that you don't have to rethink the wheel every time you need a tool. Hey, so let us know what you think about this and hopefully this will help you into cutting holes into steel a lot better. And by all means, if you're doing a lot of big holes, step into a mag drill, get some annular cutters. It's really gonna help things. And, and I will tell you, these larger, uh, thicker steel uh, step bits have come in very handy more than a few occasions. So check those out as well. And we've reviewed those. We've reviewed this mag drill, a bunch of this stuff. Hey, we'll put some stuff in the description as well. Hey, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.